This film series has been produced so as to form part of or complement the training manual required to be carried on board your ship in accordance with SOLAS Chapter 3. Two, five, seven. The first part of this film series dealt with the muster list and its importance in a ship's crew's response to an emergency. One, nine, two. Yes. The second film considered the abandonment of ship by lifeboat. In this film, we're going to look in detail at the methods of abandonment using inflatable life rafts. Minimum standards for these craft are detailed in the International Convention for Safety of Life at Sea, SOLAS. The David Launch life raft offers dry shot evacuation. While the evacuees are mustering, the launching party, as designated by the muster list, prepare the life rafts for embarkation. Although life jackets are not worn during this demonstration, it is recommended that they are worn by all life raft launching parties. First, the portable rails are removed. Then, the embarkation ladder is secured and lowered. The life raft is then brought to the embarkation area. Each manufacturer's rafts differ and their instructions should always be consulted. However, the basic principles and launching sequences are common to all. The David Crane is prepared. On some vessels, a hinged embarkation platform is provided, and this also needs to be turned out. The life raft shackle is pulled out of the canister and the fall is hooked to it. Hook on the raft. It is essential to check that the hook mechanism is properly closed and that the arrow has moved to safe. It is important to familiarize yourself with your ship's particular davit and hook arrangement. Secure the bowsing lines. The bowsing lines are broken out or pulled out and made fast to the deck cleats provided. Plenty of slack is left. Secure the painter. The life raft's painter is made fast to a strong point on the ship. Having made sure that all is clear over the ship's side and around the deck preparation area, the winch operator lifts the life raft clear of the deck to inflation height. Generally, there will be a preset mark on the fall to indicate the correct extent of the lift. The life raft is then slewed outboard on the David. The final position will be shown by preset marks on the David. Once it is in position, the life raft is inflated by pulling on the painter. Sometimes a second pull is needed to activate the second gas bottle. Once the inflation is complete, the excess gas is vented. So the inflation will have finished long before the noise of gas escaping stops. In the raft. Once it is fully inflated, the life raft is pulled in tight on the bowsing lines and secured to the embarkation point, ready for boarding. Before anyone embarks, a crew member must check the life raft thoroughly for any leaks or defects.
Should there be any faults or if it has not fully inflated, it should be brought inboard and released. This is, however, rarely necessary. Once he is satisfied that everything is in order, the leader of the life raft party orders the evacuees to board. And shoes off, please. Any sharp objects? Okay, okay go. Okay. Shoes off, sharp objects, please. Before each person enters, a final check is made to ensure that they have no sharp objects, such as footwear, pens, brooches, or tie pins, which could damage the life raft or other people in it. Sharp objects. Two crew members sit at the entrance and instruct the evacuees to position themselves alternately around the sides of the raft, directing them to left and right in sequence. Inside, the evacuees sit facing the centre, always sitting down as far outboard as possible next to the previous occupant. No one must ever sit on the buoyancy chambers. Let go of the painter. Once the life raft is loaded, the painter and bowsing lines will normally be released and thrown in the raft. However, if the ship has headway, it may be necessary to retain the painter and tend it to facilitate the releasing of the hook when the life raft reaches the water. Let go of the bowsing line. It is extremely important to ensure that none of the lines snag on obstructions on the ship's side, as the life raft could be tipped up or damaged during lowering. Swing out the David. The hook's automatic release line is left uncocked. Number three life raft, 20 persons on board. Once the order to evacuate has been received from the bridge. Roger, launch the raft. Lower away. The winch operator checks that all is clear below and the command to lower away is given. When the life raft is one or two meters above the sea, the leader cocks the automatic release hook mechanism by pulling the red lanyard. There are some variations between different types. Consult the manufacturer's instructions for the life rafts fitted to your ship. Once in the water, there will be little weight on the fall and the offload release mechanism will open automatically, leaving the life raft to drift free. On board the ship, the winch operator raises the fall using the quick recovery system. While the first life raft is being lowered, another is being prepared. The David launched life raft is not the only system that offers dry shot boarding of an inflatable survival craft. One alternative is the inflatable escape slide or chute. The evacuees assemble at their muster stations. The chute and platform are inflated. The life rafts which have been launched are gathered around the platform. For demonstration purposes, these life rafts are not fitted with canopies, which are an international requirement. When everything is ready, the evacuees are directed down the chute to board their allocated life raft. The advantage of these systems is that they offer dry boarding of the survival craft. Evacuees who are dry are much less likely to suffer from exposure than those who are wet. It is not so easy to avoid getting wet with the familiar throw overboard type of life raft. These are mounted in racks and sometimes they must be carried to the ship's side. They are fitted with a hydrostatic release and a weak link to enable the life raft to release itself, inflate, and then come to the surface should the vessel sink. The deck guardrails are removed and the embarkation ladder lowered. Let go of the ladder. Then the painter is securely attached to a strong point on the ship. This will not be necessary if the life rafts are mounted at the throwover position, as the painter is already secured to a strong point. The Senhouse slip or release button is then operated, 
and the container carried to the ship's side. Having checked that all is clear below, the life raft is thrown into the water. Stand by. Throw the raft overboard. Heave on the painter. The painter is then hauled in. When free pulling ends, a strong tug is given. This triggers the inflation mechanism. Once it is fully inflated, the life raft leader climbs down the ladder, holding the painter under his arm. As he descends, the life raft is pulled towards the ship's side. At the bottom of the ladder, he uses the painter to secure it alongside. He then boards the craft and checks it for leaks. Once satisfied that it is as it should be, embarkation can begin. The objective is to enter the life raft dry if possible. Evacuees should climb down the ladder and step in through the entrance. In an emergency, they can jump the last one or two meters only. They should land with knees bent, putting no weight on the canopy. Never jump onto the canopy itself, as this will damage it and injure those sitting beneath. Throughout the evacuation, the life raft leader must check that the raft is not damaged by chafing against the ship's side. Once it is loaded, the painter is cut as far away from the raft as possible. It then drifts free. In any survival craft, the first priority is to get away from the ship's side. In calm conditions, as well as paddling, it may be necessary to weight down the sea anchor, throw it out of the raft and haul the raft towards it. The anchor is retrieved and the process repeated. If the ship still has way on her, or if there is wind, the sea anchor is deployed. If the raft is on the weather side of the ship, the sea anchor will hold it and the ship will drift away. Controlling the direction of travel of a life raft is not easy. The wind will always be the governing factor. Once away from the ship, the life raft should join up with other survival craft. The rescue boat and any other motor lifeboats will lend assistance. Great care is needed when towing life rafts. Once secured to another survival craft, the sea anchor should be deployed. If for any reason the raft inflates upside down or capsizes, it can be righted. This is easiest for tall, fit people. The evacuee takes hold of the righting strap and climbs onto the life raft. Then, placing the feet immediately below each end of the gas bottle, or bottles, the evacuee hauls on the writing strap, using his weight to help him. When the life raft turns over, he should cover his head and, staying on his back, swim out at right angles to the writing strap. This is so as not to hit the gas bottles or to become entangled in the straps by the entrances. With a large life raft, it is not always easy for one person to do this on his own. 
in which case two people acting in unison will more easily be able to write it. The first two people into the life raft should be the ablest and fittest present, as once inside, they will be able to help others to board. To enter, the feet are placed as far up the boarding loops below the entrance as possible. Grasp the handholds inside the raft, then pulling up on the straps and pushing with the legs, tip into the entrance. A ramp will be fitted to new life rafts to improve access. Being helped to enter is much easier than doing it on your own. Those inside must make certain that they themselves do not fall into the water. Initially, they should use the buoyancy of the survivor's life jacket to help them, bobbing him or her up and down in the water before hauling them inside. In survival situations, the importance of leadership cannot be overestimated. Always plan on being in the life raft for a long time. Even in a busy seaway, there is no guarantee that the rescue services will arrive quickly. Once the sea anchor or drogue has been streamed, the priorities are, first, protection against exposure, secondly, helping the rescue services to locate you by keeping a good lookout and using the radio, torch, heliograph, whistle or pyrotechnics, and thirdly, conservation of water supplies. As soon as possible, anti-seasick pills must be taken by everyone on board, regardless of how good a sailor they consider themselves to be. Okay, ladies and gents, it's important now that we get this raft dry and ourselves dry. So we are, John, if you like, take the Always dry out the life raft floor using the baler and one of the sponges provided. The other sponge should be kept salt free to collect condensation. Then, in cold climates or cold water conditions, inflate the floor to provide insulation. Take your life jackets off, wring out the top layer of clothing. The occupants should protect themselves from the cold if in cold climates and from the sun if in hot climates. They must stay dry or get dry if they're wet. Wet clothes must be removed and wrung as dry as possible before being put on again. In the life raft, the inside watchkeeper is responsible for monitoring the condition of the raft and checking for leaks. There will always be materials for repairing leaks. Read the manufacturer's instructions carefully. OK, John, that's fine. I'd like you to be the lookout now. If you put your head out through the door, please. Lookouts must be posted at all times. No water or food should be consumed in the first 24 hours, except by those who have lost a lot of body fluid or who are badly burned. Instructions on the stores in the life raft must be read. Leadership will be vital. Training and knowledge of proper survival techniques will be important. Consult the manuals on your vessel. The issues and techniques of survival in lifeboats and life rafts are thoroughly explored in the fourth film in this series, Techniques of Survival. No one is a survivor until they have been rescued.